I'd like to talk to you about a very important project, which is part of the Stop the Talking and Show project, which is literally worldwide. But I would like to begin by telling you a story. A number of years ago, I had the opportunity to be the guest speaker at a hot solo dinner in Monsi. Now, of course, as a guest speaker, I was the final speaker, but there was somebody who got up to speak before me, a very trim, good-looking man. And the first words out of his mouth were so shocking, nobody could really believe what he was saying. And he said, I want all of you to know that I am a benefactor of Tchias HaMesim. Coming back from the dead, what did that mean? And then he told us an amazing story. He said that a number of years ago, he was in his home with his wife, and suddenly he felt terrible chest pains, and he realized that he's getting a heart attack. And he said to his wife, please call Hatzalah. I, I don't feel well. Hatzalah came, they tried to revive him, and they couldn't. And they called a second unit, and they still couldn't revive him. And his wife was sitting on the couch crying, and they called a third unit, and they said, we got to go to the hospital. And she said, I want to come along. And he, they said to her, no, you just sit on the couch and you say, tell him. That's the best thing that you could do. She said, no, I'm coming along. And she came along in the ambulance, and on the way to the hospital, he was revived. The third unit was able to revive him, and they saved his life. And he said, if you take a look at the Ritva, the very first Ritva in Masech Tainis, he said, you will understand what I'm talking about. Now, watch this. You will not believe it because you and I say this three times a day, not realizing what we're talking about. He said that the Ritva says that in the Shmon Esra, Machal Kachayim, we say the words Machayim Esim three times. And he says, you know what Machayim Esim three times is all about? He says the first one is the fact that Hashem allows food to grow because if we didn't have food, we would die. So the first way that Hashem is Machayim Mesim is every single person who has food on the table, that's only because food grew. Now watch this. He says, what is the second Machayim Mesim the Ritva says? He says, it's near Samech Neiflam V'Roifech Haylam to tell you. That is on the Bnei Adam, that is a person. Shekorav Kitzam Lamoves. A person is at a threshold. He's on the threshold of death. He's a hair breath away from death. And Hashem sends the messengers and he's being healed. He said, that's where I was. That's the second Machayim Mesim that we're talking about, the Machal Kachayim. The third one, Venem an Atal Mesim, is what you and I always think about, that in the time of Mashiach, there'll be Tchias Mesim. The reason that I tell you this is because you and I have been davening for years. Did we ever think that there's three different Tchias HaMesim? And that's what we're talking about now. Perish Hamilais, knowing the translation of words. Now I want to show you something. You know what the, the morale says? The morale tells us, where does the word tefillah come from? You'll be surprised. You know, in Bereshis Memches, Pasuk Yod Aleph, Yaakov, when he saw, sees Yosef, he says to his son Yosef, who he hadn't seen for 22 years, Vayoymi Yisrael Yosef, Yaakov says to Yosef, Ra'oi panecha loifilati, it never even occurred to me in my mind, in my thought process, that I would see you again. Now watch what the morale says. Filolti means a thought process. In my mind, that's where the word tefillah comes from. Rashi says, Loi milani libi lachshav It never even occurred to me that I would see you. So tefillah means a thought process. That means not just rushing through the words of davening. And I want to show you what I do, and I'm a big believer in this, and that's why I brought my siddur to show you. I have two siddurim that I daven from, and I try to take them wherever I go, and I underline, and I highlight. You see, in my siddur right here, it says, Machaya Mesim, it is highlighted, and it is circled three times. So that when I'm davening, I'm thinking about those three different chiyas hamesims. And that's what I believe that you should do. And that's what adds to the parish of tefillah. When you hear a good pshat in davening, and you understand the meaning in davening, underline it, highlight it. And I have it in this sitter as well, which I'll show you in a moment. But the idea is because that's a thought process. That's a conversation with Hashem. Now, part of the not talking in shul is because you're talking to Hashem. And when you realize you're having a conversation with Hashem, you're not going to talk to anybody else. And that's the second thing that I want to talk about. I want to talk about the idea of understanding and making a study of the words of tefillah. Now, you're going to be shocked when I'm about to tell you right now, especially women. Now, women make a bracha every morning, She'osani kirtsoinai. Hashem, you made me according to your will. 
What does that mean? Did it ever occur to you? What does it mean? What are we saying? What is a woman saying when she says, Shasani Kitsarnai? Now, I'll tell you a shot from Rabbi Schwab, and this is a great safe on Tfila, Rabbi Schwab on prayer. You know what he says? You won't believe it. He says, Men by their nature require more mitzvahs to bring them closer to Hashem. However, women were created with an innate nature which is more in accordance with the will of Hashem. In other words, why do men have so many mitzvahs? Because it's a nebuch on us. Because we're so far from Hashem. So we need the mitzvahs to be brought us closer to Hashem. But women, Shosani Kitsani, the woman in the innate nature is closer to Hashem, what Hashem wants us to be. Shosani Kitsani, you made us according to your will that we should be compassionate, we should be balichesa, we should be concerned. And that's what you're talking about. Now, when you say the bracha Shosani Kitsani, you're not thinking about it. What do you mean? Now, I'll tell you my own shot. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but my pshat is in Shasani Kitsani, because we know that when Hashem was going to create Adam, he in a sense consulted. Rashi says, of course, Hashem made Adam himself, but he consulted. Nasa Adam b'tzalmenu kudmaseinu. Let's make, he consulted with the Malachim, so to speak. But when it came to the women, he didn't consult with anybody. He did it exactly the way he wanted. That's what I think the pshat is, Shasani Kitsani. Now let me tell you one more story, and then we'll remember something fabulous. You know, the Skelena Rebbe was a great person, especially during the Second World War. He had many young men and young women in his home to make sure that they didn't have to go to the army, they would lose their Yiddishkeit. And then somebody snitched on him, and he was put in solitary confinement. And the Rebbe, when he davened Shemineser, a regular, it took him more than an hour here in solitary confinement where they took away his yarmulke and his glasses. Of course, he could daven for hours. And he was davening Baruch She'omar. And when he was davening Baruch Shammah, he could not believe it because he's been saying Baruch Shammah for years. And in Baruch Shammah, it says all the wonderful things that Hashem does. He said there should be a world, and it was, Merachem al Oretz, Merachem al Abriyos. He is compassionate on society. And then he said these words, Goizer Umakayim. Hashem makes a gzera and he fulfills it. And he couldn't believe it. Why is that here? That's a terrible thing. Bar Hashem is positive. All the wonderful things that Hashem does. Goyzer Makayim is a terrible thing. He makes a and he fulfills a gzera. And the Rebbe got so angry at himself. How could I never have thought about this question? I've been doubting this for years. He said, Hashem, don't let me out of here until I think about it. And listen to what he came up with. He said the words, Goyzer Makayim, Goyzer Makayim, so many times. Then he realized, oh my goodness, Kayim has another meaning. Kayim means not only to fulfill, but to exist, to have kiyum. And he says, that's what it means. Baruch Goyzer, sometimes Hashem has to make a gzera, or makayim, he gives us the koyach to exist, to come through, to have a kiyum through that difficult thing. And the Rebbe said, when he felt that, and he understood that that was the pshat in Baruch Goyzer, makayim, he said he knew in a couple of days he'd be out. And he was out. And that's what he told over on the first anniversary of, of his getting out. And I have it in this sitter. You see, over here, Baruch Goyzer, makayim, have a line next to it. So every day I'm thinking, this sitter, is talking to me. Now, when you concentrate on the words and you learn something like Goiza Makayim every morning, even if you're flying through the Dominic, but you see it underlined, you're going to think about that. No matter what happens, Hashem's giving you the strength to exist. Baruch Goiza Makayim. Again, that's only by Perish Hatfila. Now, I'll just tell you one more thing. And I'm a big believer in saying Altira. Now, there's a whole long story. Maybe we'll have to use it for a different occasion. But I can just tell you the day after 9-11, there was a principal in Sheva High School, and it was Mrs. Rachel Reifer, and she spoke about Altira. I will never forget. I was the second speaker, but what she said, I remember even more than what I said. And she said an amazing thing. Altira, mi pachat pisaim, she said to the girls, do not be afraid of sudden terror, like that terrorist attack that took place in 9-11, or mishoyes rishoyim kisavoy, and the Holocaust of Rishoyim when it comes, ki imono keel, kas Hashem is with us. Now, I can tell you this. From that day on, I've been saying Altira three times a day. It's after Olenu. It's in a different typeface. But that's what gives us strength, no matter what it is, Ki Kale. But you know something? Unfortunately, many years later, she passed away. She was killed in a car accident. Friday night, a, an older person was driving on Route 59 and killed her. And then I had to give the Shleishim. And you know what I said? That the last posik in Altira is something that I never thought about. And, but then when I started saying it, if you take a look at it, it says Ani five times. I, 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 I. What is Hashem saying? Yeshai is quoting Hashem. And you know what I think? Ani, who uh, God, Hashem says to all of us, Ve'ad Zikna, you're going to get old? Don't worry. Ani, who I'm there, I don't get old. Ve'ad Seva, you'll be elderly. Ani, as bo, I will protect you. I will endure. Ani, as Sisi, I made you. Ani, as so I'll carry you. Ani, as bo, I'm late and I'll save you. I have these five anis underlined in every sitter that I daven in. You know why? 
because that's what I is all about. Not I need, I crave, I want, I help, I do, I care. That's what davening is all about. Davening is your guideline. And when you see the words of tefillah and you underline it, you're going to be a different personality because you're talking to Hashem and the sitter is talking to you. Hashem should bless all of you that you should take the sitter and know that it's your life. Hashem is talking to you through the words of the Heilige Chazal who composed the sitter. And in that way, hopefully, our tefillahs will be answered.